Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can kill your player and respawn them at a certain point in the level. This is going to be super simple to set up and very easy to add game over screens and things like that. So let's get started. So as you can see all I've got in this level is a player, a background, a couple of platforms and a main camera. And if I press play here, this is all that happens. We've got a little left and right movement with some animations that is from the last tutorial. If you want to go check that out, feel free. But we have no way to kill our player and that is what we're going to do now. So before we crack right on into scripting, we do need to do some things in the editor first. For a start, we need to create a game object that the player collides with and when the player does collide with it, we then run the script to kill the player. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click here. We're going to go on 2D object, sprites and square. Now, of course, for your game, you might want to use sprites you've made in other softwares. But for this tutorial, we're just going to be using a red square. Now, at the moment, you can't actually see it. That's because I need to reset the transform. So I'm going to right click on the transform, hit reset. And then on the Z, I'm going to move it back. And the reason we do that is because our main camera on the Z axis is set to minus 10. So in order for everything else to be seen, it has to be behind zero. Now this may well not apply for your project, but it does for mine. I'm using Unity's universal render pipeline, which requires me to do this. If you can see your sprite already and you can see it in the game view, then don't worry about that. Now with this square, I'm just going to click on it and rename it to kill enemy. I'm then going to go into our inspector here and change the color to red. Now if I zoom out in our editor view, I can hit T on our keyboard to move to our transform tool and I can drag it around like this. And if I hold Alt, it will do it equally. So I can make a long bar here, which could represent some spikes, for example. Press W and drag it back down here. You can also access these tools from the top left here. And now this game object needs a box collider. So I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to type in box collider 2D and I'm going to select it. Now, if we open this up, you can see that there's a very, very faint green line around the outside of the box here, which is exactly what we want. And if you really want, you can hit Edit Collider here and adjust these bounds. I'm going to leave it to how they are, so I'm going to press Control Z. And now the last thing we need to do in the editor before we create the script is go to our player here and make sure he has the tag player. I have one right here, but you can also add one if you don't have it. You can press the plus sign, type in player with a capital P. Then go back to our player, press the tag, and then select our player tag. Now everything in the editor is mostly set up. The last thing we need to do is go onto our kill enemy game object here, add component, and we're gonna add a new script. And I'm gonna type in kill player. I'm gonna hit new script here, then create and add. And now in our inspector, you should see this script at the bottom, and I'm just gonna double click on it to open Visual Studio. Now in Visual Studio, this is gonna be a very simple script to start off with. But it is nice and accessible, which means it is easy to build upon as your game becomes more and more complicated. So all we're going to need is two variables at the top. They're both going to be public. And the first one is going to be public game object player because we need a reference to our player. And the second one is going to be public transform respawn point. Now you may be wondering what is our respawn point? And we haven't actually made one yet. When we go back into the editor, we're going to create a brand new respawn point, which we can drag wherever we want. And wherever we drag it, the player will respawn to after we've written this code. So outside of the update function, I'm going to use an on collision enter function. So I'm going to type in void on collision enter 2D. I'm going to change this collision to other. And then I'm going to write an if statement inside here. And I'm going to say if other dot game object dot compare tag is equal to player and you may have seen me use this many times and that is because it is super super helpful for doing things like this and at the end here i'm going to do a curly bracket so now we've got a conditional statement and inside this statement i'm going to get our player game object that we've got up here so i'm going to go player and then i'm going to set the position of this player using dot transform dot position and i'm going to set the position to our respawn point that we put up here so i'm going to go respawn point dot position so essentially what is happening here is that when the player collides into this game object, so any game object that has the player tag, then this condition will run. So the player game object's position will be set to the respawn points position, which we're gonna do in the editor now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna right click in our hierarchy. We're gonna go 2D object, sprites, square again, and we're gonna call this respawn point. Again, if you can't see it, make sure to make a negative value on the Z axis, and then we can drag it around as you can see. And now from here, once you can see it, we can actually remove this sprite renderer. 
So you can just right click, remove component. We don't need it anymore. And what we do need is if you go into our inspector, the top left of our inspector, we have this little cube here. If you click on it, I'm gonna choose the diamond. And what this essentially is, is a little gizmo, which we can see in the editor, but we can't see in the game, which we can now drag around and we can see it when we don't have this game object selected. So now we can move this respawn point right to the start of the level, for example, say here, or we could have it here. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna put it here just to show the difference and that this actually works. And now that we've done that, we need to go on our kill enemy and actually assign our variables here. So for our player, we're gonna drag our player game object into this little slot. And for our respawn point, it's gonna be our newly created game object. From here, I should be able to hit play. We'll do a little bit of running. And if we jump into this object, you can see that we respawn at the exact point we wanted to at that new game object location. And the reason this version is so great is because it's so quick to debug. We can move this respawn point if we wanted all the way to here. Not quite sure why you'd want to do this for a respawn point, but you know, it's your game, do what you need to do. Now there is one more method I'm gonna show you, which is more centered around a way to respawn the player, not the point that it respawns at. And that is using scene management. And the reason I'm gonna show you this method is because for example, you may have objects in your game that need to move all at the same time or at the same time as the player starts the level. For example, a rhythm game that is in tune with the player. And in this case, it may be better to reset the whole level rather than just changing the player's position. So to do this, first we need to go at the top and add a new namespace. So I'm gonna go using unity engine.scene management. And from here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna comment out this code right here. So I'm gonna select all of it. I'm gonna do control K and then control C and it will comment out the whole code. What I'm gonna do here is create a variable down at the bottom. It's gonna be called scene. And we're just gonna also call this current scene. And we're gonna equal this to scene manager dot get active scene. What this line is doing is accessing the current scene the player is in. And then from there, I'm gonna add a new line that says scene manager dot load scene and then we can pass in that current scene game object. So we're gonna do current scene dot name. So what this is gonna do is exactly the same as this line of code, except instead of just changing the player's position, we're gonna reload the whole scene. So all game objects will be reset, not just the player's position. And now, as you can see, instead of our player's position moving to here or to here where our respawn point is, it's just gonna reload the whole level. So therefore it will place our player wherever we had it when we play the scene. So this is just two very simple ways that we can kill our player and respawn him in a certain point or just reload the whole scene. But guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Make sure to subscribe if you did and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.